Jonathan. And we're Creative for Learning. Today we are going to continue on with our series, um, How to Leave on Time and Never Take Papers Home Again. We're going to tackle a large concept. Yeah. How, Big. How to, how to grade essays faster. So far in our series, we've been doing a lot and talking a lot about like daily schedules and other kind of mindset things and things that help you just daily in your classrooms to save time so that throughout your day you're saving time so you have more time to plan and grade papers when you're actually in your classroom so that you don't have to take the papers home with you. Um, but That's probably where all the extra time's gone so far. Yeah. You found some, saved some time from the trips and the planning and the all that stuff, the batching and all those, but you've probably poured it into, okay, now I have more time to grade, or maybe you've just been chilling. I don't know what, but we're going to <laughs> talk now about the essays. So Something that I'm sure you've been aching, but what about that giant never-ending stack of papers to grade? And we talked... Um, in one video about grading for effort or accuracy, and this one we're going to kind of switch it and go even bigger. Um, and practical. Like and some serious, I mean big ideas, but practical. And, yeah, yeah. and it might be really, if you decide this, it might be really difficult, but there was a switch that Jonathan made, um, and he didn't bring a paper home for seven years to grade. And it was quite amazing. And, yep, is that... <laughs> I'm trying to do different ways for seven. Oh, <laughs> I know, it's throwing me off. Um, anyway, so for seven years, no papers. Um, and what was this magical switch that you made? Yeah, and it's, that may even seem unbelievable. You might not believe me. Um, for real, though, seven years, no papers home. Not small ones, not essays, like, not the daily work, not, none of it. None. So, um... Yeah, like it, it was a big switch I made. It was an aha moment, um, and and maybe we've talked about this before, but maybe nobody's ever told you that it's possible. Like until this point, everybody had always told me, "Well, you're an English teacher, man. Those papers," <laughs> and I just believed it. And at one point, I just had to stop believing it. Like I may be the first person to ever try this. Maybe I was, I hope I'm not the first person, but I can't believe I'm the first person to try this. Um, so this may not be some magic formula, but this was my journey and I figured it out for myself and we wanted to share it because it saved me a ton of time. And seriously, for the first seven years of my daughter's life, I didn't take a paper home, which was awesome, right? So here's how it would normally go for me. You, you might relate to this. You assign an essay, you teach them through the process, you give them the days in class to write them maybe. Uh, maybe you don't have that time and they're doing it for homework, whatever it is. They would. The way I would do it is in class, I'd budget like a whole week, a day per paragraph really, and they would ask me questions, show me their paragraphs, I'd walk around and make sure they're on it, and then I would collect a rough draft. And I called it a rough draft at that time. I don't anymore. We'll talk about that in an upcoming episode. Um, but that started the dreaded paper grading cycle. We got a rough draft, which means I got to get it done quick because um, I don't want to wait four weeks for them to get to the final draft because then they forgot everything about their essay, right? And so I had, of course, like since I had this paradigm in my head, I had to take papers home at that point um, because there was no other way to do it. Um, so yeah, I would uh, use my grading rubric and fix all of the errors and try in a timely fashion, which timely fashion for 250 middle school essays meant many, many, many hours, right? If I were to spend 10 minutes on each of their essays, that's 2,500 minutes divided by 60 minutes per hour is 40, 40 hours? That's 40, that's a whole work week extra of grading essays just so I could get their rough draft back in time so they could fix all the errors I just told them so they could turn in a final draft, which I then was required to grade again, right? Maybe this is a familiar process. That is, that started to become insane. 
<laughs> in my head. And just saying it out loud seems insane. And like you can commiserate with me, uh, maybe, and you're probably still doing something like that. I want to give you a way out, a hope um, that, that worked for me. Um, so I started feeling like that's taking way too much time. And here's really the problem I was seeing. I kind of just said it. Students were only fixing the errors I found because I was the expert. So why could I, why should I ever expect them to fix anything else besides what the expert found? Right? And yeah, that was, that was a big aha for me. And that got you thinking, so no wonder they don't know how to edit their essays because you've been doing <laughs> the editing for them. Yep. And so then you tried to figure out how to flip things for them and make it so that you could empower them to be the ones editing. And I mean, you taught them grammar and things like that. So the hope is that it would switch into them being able to see that in their writing. Yeah. But this... and it did a little bit. You know, they would, yeah. as I taught grammar and as we taught the commas and sentence structure and all that, it started to filter into their rough drafts, mm -hmm. but it never really filtered into their final drafts because if I didn't fix the stuff in the rough mm -hmm. draft, then they didn't fix it, mm -hmm. right? That was, yeah. <laughs> so then... Um, you let's see they were doing the editing and you were doing the grading that's how you you switched it yeah i started to i started to see it as i think i had to separate those words because they're different like the editing part and the grading part i always in my head thought like all of the red marks the green marks whatever color mm -hmm. i would use on there that was the grading part but what i really realized is i was doing their editing so of course they didn't know how to edit. And so then, wait, if, if I were to pass the editing back to them, then what would the grading be? Mm -hmm. Like, what would it be fair for me to grade? Yeah, and so it was, it was when I figured that out, it started to save so much time. And, and really my students got so much better at writing. So with the next batch of essays, here's what I did. Um, I only wrote a letter grade at the top. That's all. Wait. No editing, no correction, no comments, what if, no what marks. If you saw something that was like a random nothing capital, oh. nothing, but a letter grade at the top, which meant that I could grade them way faster. Um, of course, it caused me psychological pain to pass <laughs> up all of the errors that were in there. But I knew there was a different goal. The goal was that they were going to fix the errors, not me. I'm just grading it. The grade is put the grade, right? And then later I can teach them how to edit. So if I separate those processes, then I can grade this way faster and actually get them practicing what they need to practice. So um, I had to internalize my essay grading rubric. Mm -hmm. And once I did that, I got to, it, it took me some practice, but um, really right at the beginning, I was able to grade essays way faster because I was basically just reading them. And then since I'd internalized my essay rubric, I didn't really have to read them all the way through. Like I didn't have to pay super close attention to every word because I'm looking for structure and big ideas at the beginning and then we'll zoom in on the smaller ideas. And so then I actually, you know, at one point I, at my, at my peak, I was down to like 30 to 45 seconds per essay. What? Right? Um, and, and I could tell right away, like once I started filtering it that way, I could grade the essays even faster. And so 250 essays graded at 30 seconds, let's just even call it a minute per essay is 250 minutes. That's still four hours, but four hours is better than 40 hours. Mm -hmm. You want to get 36 hours back? <laughs> 36 hours. And that happened with every one of the essays. I got 36 hours back. Um, it's just crazy when I, <laughs> when I think about that. Oh man. It's like binge watching a whole series of something. Like all of <laughs> Walking Dead. I could, yeah, anyways. Um, <laughs> Not that that's the yeah. best use of your time. And so then here's what I would do then. I would hand the rough drafts back to them. And they, of course, then looked through for all the work I'd done for them, which was nothing. What? I just had a letter grade on top. And then their question was, wait, 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 why did I get this grade? And I would say, let's figure it out. Mm. And that was the process. So then I would walk them through how to grade their essays. I handed out a, I had to create a, a rubric for them, not a rubric for me, because I don't know if you've looked at your rubrics before. Lots of them are teacher centric and not student centric. I had to create a student understandable rubric that they could grade themselves. Mm -hmm. right? I called it a 
fix these in your essays now. And we have it actually in our store. We'll put a link for you. You can go check it out. It'll save, it'll help you flip the classroom in that way. Um, and then I walked them through it, right? I, we highlighted, well, yeah, so I handed them out the thing and I showed them there's check boxes and I told them don't turn back in your next draft until every checkbox is done. And they had to go through every checkbox themselves, not me, them, right? And then we got highlighters out. I had them get four different colors. I didn't care what colors they were, but um, I liked pink and orange and yellow and uh, green actually is even better than yellow and blue. Blue sometimes is a little dark, whatever, I don't care. Uh, but we got four <laughs> different colors out and then we went through the essays. They highlighted their hook and their intro, their thesis statement, topic sentences, their quotes and proof, the page numbers, transition sentences, down in the conclusion, the echo of their thesis, and then their final like philosophical closing lines that were supposed to resonate with us deeply in our souls. All of that. But they did it. They highlighted it, not me. And then they took their notes. I, I had them I had them write in the margin like, oh, forgot a topic sentence, <laughs> which is a, a sentence that I would have normally written, except now they're writing it. They're looking at their essay, the spot where they didn't put it, where they just told themselves they didn't put it, mm -hmm. and writing the note in the side, I forgot to do this. So much more deeply in the learning mm -hmm. center than a comment that a teacher did, mm -hmm. plus I saved 36 hours. Yeah. So, Boom. So they were, <laughs> it was awesome. So they were trying to find where to highlight it, and then they realized, I... There's nothing to highlight here. Or, like, I would I would have them highlight it and then trade papers, mm -hmm. right? Look at your partners and see if they actually highlighted a thesis. And then they're looking at somebody else's, having to process it again. Mm -hmm. And then they go, wait, wait, that's not a thesis. You just highlighted a sentence, right? Mm -hmm. And then... And then they were able to check each other that way. But it was very direct. I don't know if you've ever found your students don't know how to peer critique, right? Maybe that's because I haven't taught them how to peer critique because they don't actually know how to critique themselves, right? Oh, this was so, I don't know if you can hear the passion in my voice. Like <laughs> this revolutionized my essay grading. Um, it was amazing, right? Uh, because really like I hadn't been teaching them how to grade their essays or to edit their essays. I had been doing it for them. They were the ones that really needed to learn this. Um, and then here was here was the surprising thing happened is um, looking back really it shouldn't have been surprising, but I want you to just think what would happen on the uh, final draft of that and then the rough draft of the next essay and the final draft of the next essay. And what was happening is they they started making actual progress. And it, and it was with me only writing letter grades. It seems so counterintuitive to write one letter, right? And then they improved so much, but it absolutely did. And they skyrocketed. Some of my students were writing, because I used to teach freshman comp in college. Some of my students were writing at freshman level by the end of that year, seventh graders. And I wasn't like pushing them past what they were capable of. I actually just taught them how to do it. Oh gosh, it was so, it was so crazy. They, and that year we did nine essays and I took zero papers home. And that was probably too much, so I dialed it back down to six <laughs> the next year, and they still learned a meet, like way past grade level on their writing, just because I actually taught them how to write. It was crazy what that flip did. Yep, and you didn't have it. We didn't talk about me sharing this right now, but he he's not gonna brag about himself, but it was funny because the high school freshman <laughs> teacher <laughs> from the school that the kids went to after his class, called him up, like f found his name and figured out who he was, called him up and said, what did you do in your class with your kids? Because in my classroom, I can tell which kids are from your class compared to the other kids because they are so much more advanced. It's like I have two separate classes which kind of didn't make it easy for her. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, but, Mrs. D, sorry. But how awesome is that, that those kids were so well prepared and knew and how to write and confident. Totally yeah. Totally confident in their skills. So this idea that Jonathan had and did and how it revolutionized his um, way of teaching writing and then also going into how he graded his writing it may seem super difficult for you. You might be thinking, oh my goodness, I don't know how I could not make marks 
on their paper. One way is to put the pen away. <laughs> like, don't hold it. You're like, I don't know. <laughs> so, at first, it might be difficult to not, not make any marks on the essays. Then, it might also um, be difficult for you to actually switch to teach them to see what it is that they need to fix in their essays. And then it also might be difficult to switch to thinking about the macro ideas of the essay and not just the micro, like the little grammar and comma things. Um, it is difficult, but we get difficult. We're teachers. Like we, we do. We can do this. We do difficult. We do difficult. Um, but for a long time, the difficult for so the difficult things with writing will become easier once you get used to it and then the ultimate thing will be it will be so much easier because you won't be taking papers home and so as a teacher you'll be more relaxed and so once if this is something that works for you or you can make it work even though it might be difficult at first in the long run it could actually really save you time yeah i was just doing the math so that year i did nine essays right normally it would take me 40 hours to grade one essay and that, then it moved down to like four hours to grade an essay. Mm -hmm. And four times nine hours is 36 hours. Mm -hmm. So I graded nine essays in few in less time than it took me to do the one essay in the past. Mm -hmm. Like that's mind blowing. So when I cut it back to six, they were, and then four, you know, like because six even ended up too much. Like they were doing way more writing and growing way better with me at a fraction of the time mm -hmm. and that's and i think of how much what i was able to do with all that extra time like if you had that like a whole week extra that's crazy mm -hmm. and once again you were a facilitator of independence yeah so that their rough drafts became even better and there was way less to mm -hmm. and those get then the rough drafts get less frustrating mm -hmm. rough draft number three was way less frustrating in my brain than rough draft number one yeah, as the years went on. So. Okay, so conversation of the day. Yes. If you try to teach your students how to grade their own essays, what do you worry might happen? Go for it. Down there. Tell us your worries. <laughs> Bye.